What's up, everybody? It's me, Melanie Mac, here on my new channel, Melanie Mac Go Boom. I hope you guys enjoyed that little intro piece. Uh, I had that emailed to me yesterday by Spencer from Fantasy Files Podcast. Uh, he's good at editing video and all kinds of stuff like that. And he just made that and told me I could use it. And I thought it was hilarious. So I'm going to go ahead and link his, his podcast channel in the description if y'all want to check that out. Uh, thank you, Spencer, for making that. I love it. So moving on, um, I, I'm approaching the one week mark of creating this channel almost. And I'm just so humbled by how much it's it's been growing, the feedback I've been getting and all of your support is just it's been wonderful, so thank you so much for that. Now, I've, I'm going to try not to babble too long here on the intro because I've got a lot of ground to cover, and I'm going to talk about, like, the Puritan movement and my issues I have with it. And I feel like I've, I've had issues with this for so long, but we've seen it from different sides, and I'm going to cover it from both sides of the problem here. Uh, and what kind of boggles my mind especially let, let's start with the wokey side because i actually have a lot more to cover on the other side um we're seeing i find that this this happens with two sides of the extreme on anything anyway uh we see it with politics we see it with everything when you're when you're considering two very ex extremes it's almost like they want the same thing uh but they present it differently and that's frustrating. So let me go ahead and just share my screen here. Now, well, what good thing, better thing to bring up than the, the, the recent relevancy of the green m and &M. And people really want to downplay this so much and be like, well, she basically looks the same. It's not that different. And if you really unpack uh, a lot of it in the actual features, then yeah, you know, she's still round. She still has similar features but it's the way that it's presented and it's the way that it is executed uh that makes it a, a pro a problem i was gonna say problematic but i hate that word so much now the wokies absolutely killed that word for me <laughs> so here's my take on on what what the wokies do and why that what they what they think about the the puritan movement and how their perspective of it seems to be rooted in my opinion in a, a, the a hatred of men essentially and i know that sounds very extreme and all that but it, it, it's very apparent that uh, the the wokey crowd are not inherently against women being beautiful or hot or anything like that they're against it if men find them appealing and in this case you have a character like the green m and and she was created as that type of character that men were just like drooling over i remember the old ads for it it was hilarious and so they wanted to change her this way and they make they make the characters more boring when they make these kind of changes because i mean here you've got a very dynamic pose uh just a very like flirty very confident and that's one reason that i find this such a downgrade is you just took such a confident feminine in 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 characteristics her her, her boots the but the pose and everything she's just very feminine and owns it and this is i see a powerful confident m, m woman here and then right here she's just hi hi yeah i'm boring now and and it, there's just so much character that's taken away from it and whenever they do this and whenever they make these kind of changes to any type of character um in the name of of I don't know, in the name of women and thinking that this is a good thing for women, uh, they, they make them more boring and more forgettable. And that's why we're seeing a lot of new characters and or, or remakes of, of existing characters that have gotten this kind of treatment that are forgettable and people aren't going to remember them 20 years from now like they remember the more iconic, you know, characters. So that's how I feel about that. Oh, hold on, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Now, look at this here. This is, is where somebody thought they were fixing the legendary J. Scott Campbell's artwork here. And when you think you're fixing it 
for in the name of women what uh, what i said earlier is is they're essentially making it more boring and it's it's more forgettable it's more boring now when you think about art what makes art interesting especially in like a comic book sense and and something that's not doing a, like realism is exaggeration and look at the the lines the curves this is a very exaggerated piece and that's part of what makes it so dynamic and so eye-catching. Uh, and it's beautiful. And then you have this one that's been fixed. And it's just boring. It's just sit straight. Like no, no dynamic pose whatsoever. Meanwhile, what I find so ironic about this is look at Spider-Man in the back. With his back arched. With his butt pronounced. Um, he does his squats. It just makes no sense to me. And so we're getting to a point whenever you do this and whenever you force this narrative and, and you're you're forcing this on media and, and entertainment, then what you're doing is, is you're saying, okay, the men are allowed to be cool. The men are allowed to be exaggerated. The men are allowed to be power fantasies. But the women have to be boring. The women have to be practical and, and forgettable. And uh, to me, that's, yeah, that's lame. Now... I've already talked so much about this topic in general, and I could keep talking about it, but I think, you know, for the most part, we can all see this issue here. But I kind of want to turn it around now and talk about my issues with the other side of things. Uh, I'm, I'm a Christian, grew up Christian, been a Christian, and uh, I have seen another side of it within the Christian community that I feel like is is harmful. And so I want to talk about that, and I almost didn't make this video. I, I thought about making this video days ago, and I, I decided against it because it is just kind of, it is kind of, I just worry a little bit for a few reasons, especially since when I'm about to talk about a pastor made a certain statement, and I don't like going against a pastor or something, but I decided against it, I prayed about it, all that kind of stuff, but then I kept seeing it. And it made me think, okay, you know what, maybe, maybe I was meant to talk about this. So, um, you know, I'm not knocking the pastor. No pastor is perfect, but I think that his message here is harmful. So let's go find his, his message here and then I will go from there. He made this post on Twitter, and then here it is on Facebook. Um, he said, Dear ladies, there is no reason whatsoever for you to post pictures of yourself in low-cut shirts, bikinis, bra and underwear, or anything similar ever. Not to show your weight loss journey, not to show your newborn baby, not to document your birth story. Signed, your brothers. I just find this extremely wrong on a number of levels. Now, this topic in general, before I even saw this post and all that kind of stuff, um, was kind of already on my heart because I felt the need to make a video about it a couple weeks ago. And that's another reason why I further decided to discuss this. Now, before I go any further, I do want to say when it comes to like a pastor or preaching the word of God and all that kind of stuff, like God holds us to a very, very high standard when we do these things. And so it's very important not to mislead. Uh, and of course, we're all human. We're all, you know, uh, none of us are perfect. So we're never going to be perfect. And so with that said, I do want to say that anything I say, I encourage you to do your own research because it, it is incredibly, um, you know, I'm human. And so if I, if I do at, at any point, misrepresent anything I would never want I'd never want to do that so this is my perspective and what I believe to be true but uh, do your research for yourself I want to stress that now here's a video I made a couple weeks ago talking about this topic so let me go ahead and play that and then I will elaborate further just got back from church let me unpack this this is a very common misconception in the Christian community also no shade to the commenter but just saying you're wrong Jesus never tells women that they have to cover up and the Bible in general does not have some arbitrary dress code for women. Some people confuse when Peter and Paul were talking about braided hair and jewelry. But that was entirely different. Those passages were referring to not coming to church to brag about how rich you are and all this fancy jewelry you have. And it also illustrated that beauty comes from within. Which are pretty good lessons. But women being responsible for men sinning? No. Jesus specifically told men to control their lust. Not for women to cover up. 
Jesus hung out with prostitutes. Self-control is a virtue. It's something we have to practice. Temptation is going to cross our lives each and every single day in some way or another. And it's on us to control ourselves. That said, I do think that it's important to respect different cultures. I'm not going to go to my church in a crop top. Not because I think Jesus would have a problem with it, but just out of respect for everyone else. But you might have like a church gathering type thing from a tribe in Africa where the women are topless. And that's perfectly okay. There is nothing inherently wrong with that. So whether you're a Christian or not a Christian, the big takeaway here is we are responsible for ourselves. Don't blame other people when you goof up. Okay. So that's what I had to say about that. And I know I used a lot of gendered speak on this just because I feel like that's uh, that's usually the way that it goes. But I do want to say that I do believe that this goes both ways. Um, also, I'm going to talk about a lot of a lot of biblical uh, law, if you will, uh, or a lot of things in the Bible and what's a sin and what's not a sin. Now, I am doing this to illustrate uh, the problems I have with this statement. And so I will be using biblical context here. So obviously, if you are not a Christian, you're not a believer and all that kind of stuff, um, I'm not forcing this on you or anybody else. But I am saying that myself as a as a believer, I hold myself to this standard. And uh, in this case, I want to illustrate that to um, to any fellow Christians who may, you know, kind of, believe in this this narrative here that I disagree with um now one common thing that we constantly see as I mentioned in this video is you see Peter and Paul taken out of context so much and here Peter says um in first Peter uh chapter three verses three through four he says your beauty should not come from outward adornment such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes rather it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. And so many people take this out of context and they take it to be, oh, yeah, women have to wear a lot of clothes. You know, you can't. But none, nothing of that in this says that. It's, it's simply saying, hey, your beauty should come from within. That's a good message to have. And, and this was a time where, you know, according to to i mean from what i've studied of it and and what i've seen uh it, it appears that it was a, a lot more common for uh, the women in church to to wear fancy jewelry and expensive jewelry and kind of flaunt their wealth uh in church and th and that's just not uh, that's just not what uh, Peter wanted to see here and he wanted to say hey you know what well, all of that doesn't matter what matters is what's within he's not saying you should never braid your hair or you should never wear any type of jewelry or cute clothes. He's simply saying that, hey, your beauty should come within. Don't flaunt. Don't, don't, yeah, you know? And then the same thing here with what Paul says. And he says, I also want women to dress modestly with decency and propriety, adorning themselves, not with elaborate hairstyles or gold pearls or expensive clothes. And again, this is saying like the same thing. Um, people also like to take Paul out of context when he told women to be quiet in the church and all that kind of stuff. And, and what Paul was saying in that case is, is it was common among in that time that women were talking over the pastor and that's simply not appropriate regardless of whatever your gender is and in this case it happened to be women who were doing that and that's why he said such things but Paul uh, people like to act like he didn't have respect for women and stuff but according to you know uh, theologians and all this kind of stuff and stuff that I've, I've looked into is he's actually had women in positions of power in his church uh, so it definitely was not uh, it, it was definitely a situational context thing here. Okay. Um, now, like I said in that video as well, Jesus tells us that if, if you or it was telling men at the time, but I think this applies to, to women as well, that if you look uh, at someone with lust, then you're committing adultery in your own heart and all that. Uh, but the thing is, is there's a big difference between looking at someone and being able to acknowledge that they're attractive and lusting, okay? Lust is, is an active process. Lust is when you're like, 
imagining fake scenarios in your head or fantasies and all this kind of stuff. And don't tell me we can't control that. We can. Whatever we actively think about, you're not going to control what pops in your head for five seconds, but you can uh, have control over that later. Furthermore, let's let's look at this verse here. Or let's look at yeah, Matthew 18, verse 9. Uh, and if your eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. This was really important to me and this really stands out to me because I feel like Jesus put the responsibility on us not to sin like on us. Jesus didn't say the whole world has to accommodate you. The, your your problems, your shortcomings, the, the problems that you have and the sins that you commit in your life, the whole world has to accommodate to you so you don't do that. That's, that's not a message that we see being portrayed in scripture. But we do see um, in more times than one that, hey, our, our own sin, our own problems and what we do is on us. And also... Uh, what what might be someone else's weakness might not be a weakness for for another person and I guess a good way to kind of parallel this is to think about what about somebody who may have had maybe like an alcoholic or something and just like uh, completely threw their whole life uh their whole life's out of control because they're so uh, uh, you know they have such a problem with that and they're not going to be the type of person who can can handle, oh, let me, let me go ahead and ha just have a drink or two when I'm out with my friends, and that's it, and I'll stop. Uh, they, they may not have that kind of willpower as somebody else who does, uh, because we all have different shortcomings. And in this situation, I think the same can be said, that, hey, there might be some people who have more issues with lust than others. And in that situation, they may not be able to to put themselves in situations that other people can and, and be fine with it. And you know what? If that's the case, hey, do what you got to do. In this case, gouge your eye out. Obviously not literally, but but put yourself in, in a Put yourself away from anything that might cause you to stumble in that case. So let's say that you know, watching a movie or something like that or following Instagram accounts with girls with more revealing clothes or, or whatever. Or like think about, I'm thinking about in my case, I post pictures of my abs a lot. I work out. I, I'm very proud of my progress that I've made. So yeah, I do post, I do post outfits where, um, slightly revealing. I don't get like provocative with it. I don't, try to make people lust after me that's never my intent when I do that but for people to be like oh look at you girl good job you look great hey that's fun that's nice to hear and so in that situation like let's say there was a, a Christian who struggles uh with lust then they may not want to follow me maybe they don't want to see my pictures and my gym progress and all that, that might make them stumble. And if that's the case, then then go ahead and, and they can separate themselves. And I, I no hard feelings on my part, but it's not my responsibility. I don't, I, I can't like not have fun. I can't not show my progress or whatever it may be because someone's weak in that area. And it's completely unfair to put that kind of responsibility on everybody else. It's on you not to sin. Now, there's another pastor that I follow on, oh, here we go, uh, that I follow, Patrick Weaver Ministries. And what he said, and, and I, I believe this is in response to that, uh, but I felt like he really uh, put it very nicely. Uh, a very, it, it makes sense. And he says, the truth is, lust has nothing whatsoever to do with a lack of modesty or modesty at all. Lusters, uh, kitty diddlers. I, I, I got to be very creative my, with my words here. Um, unconsensual relations people um, and and sex addicts. I guess I can say that. I don't know. I don't know what all of this video will be taken down. YouTube's, I don't know. But I'm doing the best I can. Okay. And predators like all sinners, are led by their evil desires, not by what they see or how a woman is dressed. Lust is a sin of the heart. Lust is not looking. 
Lust is an evil desire and reflects the evil within the person, projected onto the object of the lust. God gives us or God gives no excuse for any sin, as all sin is caused by an evil desire. And then he quotes James 1, 14 through 15. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Modesty is a biblical standard for all men and women. That honors our temple. But modesty doesn't have anything to do with stopping lusters, sex addicts, and predators from stumbling. Sex addicts, lusters, and predators undress targets with their eyes and feed sexual fantasies in their heads with just a look at a person. What a target is or is not wearing means absolutely nothing. Women aren't unconsensually relationed. Children aren't same uh photography or, or <laughs> photography pornography addicts don't watch porn sex addicts don't pick up prostitutes and predators don't abuse because of a lack of modesty they have an evil desire and claiming modesty fixes evil desire is the same as saying a an unconsensual relationed victim a target of a predator uh, dressed to turn on the predator. Come on. Dot, dot, dot. I know, really. It's, it's literally victim blaming. And he says, no matter how modestly a woman or a target is dressed, a luster will lust because lust isn't about looking. Lust is about evil desire. That's why Jesus said lust is an issue of the heart. It comes from within. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. Again, this is putting the responsibility on us. I think this this falls under any of, of any sin. It's on us, man. We can't expect the whole world to cater to us. And he says, as Christians, we live in a fallen world and, w and will until the day Christ returns. Therefore, there will always be temptation in the world. That's why Christ died, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. And then Romans 6, verse 6 says, For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. And then he says, the sin of lust is not fixed by modesty. The sin of lust is fixed by repentance, renewing our mind and maturing our fruit of self-control. And then he quotes a verse here, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. Um, the fruit is what separates sinners from believers. This is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. John 15, 8. Anybody who lusts for any reason is sinning and is responsible for their sin. Lust is of the world, not followers of Jesus Christ. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life comes not from the father, but from the world. When a Christian lusts, they are to examine themselves, not blame what they lust after. This is so... Yes, exactly. <laughs> examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do, not, do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. 2 Corinthians 13.5 Why? Because lust controls the luster. And anything that controls a Christian is an idol. And an idol is put above God. You cannot serve two masters. Lust is idolatry in its purest form. Judas is lust for money. Exa like, yeah. Let's talk about that. Let's bring money into this. Because, like, lust isn't only, you know, there's lust for other things. In this case, money. I love it. I love that he, that he brought this up. Judas's lust for money caused him to betray Jesus. Potiphar's wife. See, and here's an example. This is why it's not a gender thing. Potiphar's wife is a woman who, who had an issue with lust herself regarding Joseph because he was a very um, 
attractive man according to the bible and that's not his fault <laughs> so what he's supposed to ugly himself up so she won't lust after him no that was on her to control herself and she couldn't um uh caused her to try to force joseph to have relations with her and then lie on him when he refused so i don't know for those who aren't familiar with this it's funny i just got through reading this the other day um yeah she tried to get him to have relations with her and uh and she re and he refused to do it because um he was he was tight with Potiphar, dude. He's like, I ain't gonna do that, man. Like, d bros before hoes. <laughs> and so then she uh she she really tried to to get him. He ran out the house, dude. He ran out the house and like his 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 coat or tunic or whatever was was left behind because he's just like, girl, get off me. And so then she starts crying like, oh, he tried to force himself on me and made up this like fake accusation because uh, she's evil. Uh, so anyway, it says there are people who lust after dead bodies. Uh, and, and it is. Yeah. So it's true. Uh, it's a pathological fascination with dead bodies, which often takes the form of desire to engage with them in sexual activities such as intercourse. Uh, and obviously we know that's really messed up. Um, and, and at this point you can't blame a dead body. So it just shows you stop blaming the object of, uh, of what you're taking your sin out on. It, it's on us, man. Um, so then he says, let's get right church and stop calling lust an all men problem. Lust isn't an all men problem or a gender problem. Lust is a lusters problem. Repentance, fruit of the spirit and obedience fixes lust. Stop trying to use modesty to fix evil and start rebuking the evil instead of rebuking women. And I just want to clap for this. This was just so excellently put together. And I have to applaud it. And so, yeah. We had some church today. <laughs> I feel like among the Christian community, whenever I do try to speak out on this kind of stuff and share my perspective on this stuff, I it's not always a popular opinion. And I find that baffling because, you know, if, if there's, there's, as you see by, by, the pastor's statement there there's biblical backing to this i mean let's let's stop let's stop just following what tradition tells us and whatever movement that was created in this case like the the puritan movement let's actually dig into the word and if you're gonna gonna hold some sort of standard on other christians actually dig into the word of god and use that and I told everybody when I made that TikTok video I did and I posted it on Twitter and everything and people are like, you know, some, not, most people seem to agree with me, but there were some who, who were like, oh no, you're, you're, you know, this is dangerous. This is dangerous that you're even saying this. Um, I, I completely welcomed, I was like, hey, show me a verse that says otherwise and I will look into it. And I am open to changing my mind if you give me sufficient evidence. And nobody is ever able to come up with anything that gives some sort of dress code to women or that puts the blame on women for any of this kind of stuff. And what frustrates me as a Christian is that uh, this kind of messaging pushes people away from the faith. And that is a terrible thing that you do not want to be responsible for. Uh, and I think as a pastor... There is a huge responsibility that that a pastor has, and, and and it's a huge. That's why it's it's not to be taken lightly to to even be a pastor in the first place is is not to be taken lightly. And you most certainly shouldn't project your own problems and your own issues and your own sin on the rest of the world. It's dangerous. It's wrong, and you can push people away, and. Uh, that's not something you want to do and want to have to answer to. So, whew, we preached it today. <laughs> that's how I feel about it. Uh, I definitely want to see all of your feedback. Um, 
again, this is this is a, a I really wanted to get into the word on this and 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 speak to uh, other Christians on it. I that we we have our own standards and things that are considered sin in the Bible that we adhere to and that we that we uh, use the Bible as a guide and and that's important for Christians. But I again, I don't ever want anybody to feel like. I'm pushing my beliefs on anybody else. I would never do that. Now, obviously, my faith is very important to me, and I encourage it, and I I believe it to be true. And, um, you know, anybody who would want to, you know, look into it themselves, obviously, I would encourage it. But uh, I am not in the business of forcing my beliefs on anybody. But I did find it important to, to dive into the meat of the matter here. So... Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I already feel, I feel lighter. I feel like I was supposed to make this video, even though I was very scared to do it. I wasn't sure, but I feel like, I feel a lightness uh, to me now. I feel like, okay, I, I feel like this was, this was good. So, take of it what you will. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, I'll see you next time. Peace.